Hello and welcome to another episode of Coast Tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about the very simplified version of Photoshop. I'm of course talking about Lightroom. Yeah, so Lightroom is this very simple program that Adobe created that gives you a lot of options to edit your photos um, that has some of the features that uh, Photoshop has, but at a much simpler level. But without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import a new batch of photos in here. And what Lightroom can do is it can take both JPEG and RAW. I recommend editing using RAW because if you are editing the JPEGs, you're losing a lot of detail because JPEGs are already downgraded unless you have it at max quality, everything is um, high DPI count. But even then, you wanna be editing the RAWs. So we're just gonna take week of 228.20 I'm going to import that in there and you can see I have a bunch of random stuff on this and it gives you this huge uh, mass preview of what your photos are and it's really nice because it renders it very quickly I have some sports photos from earlier in that day so I'm gonna just take a look at this. So, as you can see, we have our subject right here. They're running alongside uh, an opposite high school. However, there's a lot here that I wanna deal with. First off, we have this guy's hand over in the corner of the frame, which, first off, I don't like. So we can go ahead and crop that in to get rid of that. And then I just want to make sure that this guy is kind of in the, uh, the main priority in the frame. Like, as you can see, because this is my school, this is my school right here, the red, uh, the red jersey. That is my school. So I want this guy to be prominent. And sometimes it's good to show your school kind of losing by a little bit. It, draws that little anticipation for your audience and you can see like this little shadow right here I'm not exactly thrilled with it which we could probably take a cloning brush and get rid of that if we really wanted to which you know what that'll be pretty fast so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna take a clone brush we're gonna go do a pass right here and the nice thing about the clone brush in here is that it automatically picks. So Lightroom is smart in that it'll draw from what it needs to in order to fill it. So like for really quick edits, it's fast. And then of course, sometimes it's not 100% reliable. So you have to like move where it's taking its sample from. And that's really simple. See? And when you zoom into it, you can see a little bit in a uh, little bit of imperfections right here, a little tone shifts. But when it's something this um, this uh, scale, where it's not going to change in the background or the foreground, the main thing you have to worry about with your clone brush is if you are trying to take something out in your subject, and the only spot where you can take from is your foreground or your background, because what that uh, what the consequence of that is is that it's taken at a different focal length so it's going to be possibly uh, different colors di uh, shadow is going to be a little bit different there or um, it's going to be out of focus when everything else is in focus and then we have something really cool that we can do on the right hand column with all these different uh, uh, sliders and these sliders are nice because they give you access to a lot of the different stuff that you should be working with. Like right here. Uh, this is kind of late towards the day. You really can't tell because it's um, it's not really that warm. You know, uh, at sundown, we get a lot of orange hues to our images. So if we want to bring it a little bit warmer, we have a temperature slider and I can bring that all the way to the right to make it, you know, look like we're on Venus, or I can bring it to the left that makes it look like we're on Pluto. But I want to make it kind of a nice balance so it's 
warmer to kind of give that kind of like golden hue to it. What's nice about increasing your temperature is that it also tans your subjects a little bit more. So for someone like me who's pasty, um, I can just increase the temperature slider and it looks like I'm tan. <laughs> um, and then we ha also have access to exposure, which brightens or darkens our images. So I'm just gonna increase our temp our exposure right now and that might blow out a little bit but you'll see why my exposure is up right now because the stuff we're going to be doing in a second is going to darken that so then you have your contrast which intensifies the difference between your shadows and your um, and your the sun hitting your skin or whatever your subject is so for me I'll increase this contrast and if we max it out, like the shadows are just, they'll cut through your subject. And you'll notice that we have a lot of these like really blown out highlights on our subjects, which that's why we have a highlight slider. Once we decrease highlights, you can see that where that sun hits, it's less intensified and our subject it doesn't look like they're getting shown with a spotlight um, though he's still a little pasty we can fix that up with the temperature slider make him look a little bit tanner and then we have shadows now shadows um, for this image it's not too bad shadows if we bring it all the way to the right it'll really lighten them up if we bring it all the way to the left, it'll darken them. Personally, um, I like having it brought down just a hair. It helps out with your contrast if you're trying to really make this like really impactful image in your uh, composition. But uh, we then have our whites and our blacks. Um, same idea behind the highlights. Um, and the shadows. This one just takes into account um, the specific colors of white and black. Uh, you need to pay attention to this for when you're doing prints because if your colors are really white, it's not going to print. It's just going to dodge that area and you're, it's just gonna be the paper that you're printing on because the printer is gonna read as, oh, that's um, that's just a blanket sp blank space. We don't need to do anything with that. With blacks though, uh, sometimes it'll just take a uniform shade. So for like a printer, if I have my black maxed out to something like this, his pants, his shadow across his chest and his arm is all going to be the same tone of black or at least some minor variation. Because what the printer does, it'll take just the basic spectrum, unless you're going with like a, um, a high quality Canon printer or something um, along those, uh, something among that effect. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your blacks are not truly black if you're doing printing. Um, and even in general, make sure your blacks are brought down. Uh, well, brought up. Because you don't want your printer to say, oh, that's, that's all the same tone of black. Because what happens is, it takes away that depth, like, if I made blacks completely uniform, it takes away that depth, you know? It just looks like a solid state. And then we have presence, um, which we have a few different sliders. We have texture, clarity, and dehaze, um, of which we can modify slightly. Bringing down our texture just blurs the images um, in a very simplistic form. Um, it's kind of like dulling your image. So t texture. Texture was actually, uh, it's a cool thing because texture does what clarity does, except it doesn't modify um, your contrast. What clarity does, it'll modify the contrast in addition to sharpening your image. And you might be asking, oh, why, why wouldn't I use clarity all the time? Because it's kind of unnatural. When you look at a picture with maxed out clarity, it looks, um, it looks artificial, you know? You wanna keep that um, realism in check whenever you're editing. 
and then you have your vibrant sliders um, this one right here vibrance is how vivid your colors are and then saturation it's what it sounds like the more it's increased the more color it's brought on vibrance is the toned down version of saturation saturation is everything um, but then we bring it down we get no color you know, that's the sliding scale and then we have HSL color now you have tone curve too where you can edit using this tone cur curve it's everything in here except um, you're editing based on the histogram which I don't personally do I don't like doing it that way because I'd like to know exactly where my settings are getting placed or what's messing my photo up uh, but I do use HSL color a lot more because of specific colors like right here um, we have this red jersey and we have this green jersey though I want him to be the sub focus of the image so what can I do to kind of draw the eye towards him more well I can desaturate greens because this image is kind of free of greens except for the uh, the jersey in the background here but if we uh, desaturate the greens and saturate the reds we're gonna get this popping color on him and we'll be aware of him but we're gonna be more inclined to look at the more flashy colors um, which is what you kind of have to look out for when you do subjects so with the red we're going to I'm just gonna bring down the luminance so that it's not like neon and then I'm gonna go to saturation and I'm going to increase that red and make it that nice little cherry red. And now for the greens, we're going to bring those greens down and we're going to take the luminance of greens, which it's kind of like that neon effect. So like if I brought it up, it's going to be really shiny. If I brought it down, it's going to be really dull. But for reds, we're going to just make it pop a little bit yeah and then the really cool thing is that if I want to save this type of preset I can just go over to my presets column over here to the left go to this plus icon create preset and let's just call this track uh, and go to your presets, it's still in this column, uh, and we'll copy everything. Now you can choose to, um, to copy some of the other stuff, um, like filters or like uh, gradients. I'm just gonna be copying down what I'm doing for my adjustments, uh, and that's it. And then I get my track, and I have a few other presets here that I can choose from. Like I got Josh Model Morning, uh, Warm Mood. Uh, you'll notice that my naming isn't exactly creative, or it's creative, just like not very informative. Uh, and then I can go to any photo in here and apply the preset, like right here. I can apply the track preset. Uh, and then I can choose to copy the crop too, but I don't do that. Uh, and then same issue, we get that arm there. And to fix that, it's an easy crop right there. And we still got an arm there. There we go. And then also you can change the aspect ratio too. I'm using original, but I can change it to, let's do four and a half by eight by 10. Right there. And then we got that guy in the way. Okay, one second. Sorry, this is kind of the aspect that you have to get used to because you're gonna realize as you're doing photos that you've got something you weren't, uh, you didn't initially want. And then we're just going to make it a vertical. I think it'll work nice as a vertical, yeah. 
Look at that. Look at that. Now also you have to be aware of your composition in general. Now, since this is the close to where the starting block was, I didn't really have a option about where I was shooting because the, the entire back of that field is palm trees. So you have to be you have to be aware of your background. But we can go to any image and apply this preset. Yeah, like that right there. We can make it uh, a side-by-side -side kind of like uh, rivalry image. And we can just mess around because we have a lot of different options we can take, like right here. And then of course, sometimes your presets don't work for everything. Now you'll notice that I use the preset right here and I'm not exactly thrilled with how it turned out. No, so I'm going to look at my other presets and see if anything else works. Ooh, and I like the mandolin. I use this for uh, the, for concert bands, and uh, it, it actually looks really nice because, uh, funny enough, I tuned the band preset for musical instruments, which pops out the golds and the brass and the uh, um, and the different kind of uh, materials that the in, uh, that the concert musicians use. So like their trumpets are gonna glisten a little bit more. Um, everything's just gonna pop. So, oh, and the cool thing is, we can compare what our photo looked like before and after using the YY. Um, it's right next to your full screen button, but the YY is gonna show you a before and after of your image. All right. And then of course, there's some photos that you don't need to do a lot of editing to, like right here. You probably can tell, but the only change between here is that there was a temperature change. At least let me check. Uh, so we modified our highlights, our shadows, our whites, our vibrance a little bit. Uh, did we do anything with our color? Yeah, we popped our yellows. Yeah. But play around in Lightroom, uh, you can create a preset and find that you'll love it um, without thinking, oh wow, this would be great for portraits or this would be great for sports. Um, really just play around with it. Editing is one of those cool things where you can do anything and not have to worry about the consequences unless you're doing it in Photoshop, which shouldn't be a problem anyway, but if it depends on what kind of editing you're doing. Like if you're taking the eraser tool to your, the original image, um, yeah, you should be careful about that. But uh, for Lightroom, it's very simple just to try. And uh, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Because you can even make virtual copies in here. So like, if I right click on the photo that I'm editing and I go to create virtual copy, it creates a second version of it. And it'll stack too, so I can tell which one I made a virtual copy out of. And I can choose to do different stuff um, to one image, like if I like it like this on one, but let's say I want to make this one black and white. The cool thing is on your right hand slider um, page, you can go from color to black and white. Ooh. Uh, and we can adjust our settings according to that, or Lightroom has, a, has plenty of black and white presets. Um, that you can comb through if you're not a fan of editing in black and white. I, I suggest that you do, but uh, it's the same process as before. Just play around with it. Figure out what you want to see. And before you know it, you're going to have an image that you really like. And then, of course, I want to export this to put on Instagram or social media or stuff like that. So I'm just going to go to library and I'm going to go to export. From there, I can choose to put in a subfolder, uh, which, yeah, let's do that. Uh, we're going to make it example uh, underscore Wyland. Uh, and it's going to my final products bin. I recommend that you sort your folders because if you just export to desktop, it starts cluttering up really fast. And before you know it, 
your desktop is filled with photos. So I suggest making like a dedicated folder to your photography or raw files or stuff like that and make sure it's labeled properly because well, later down the road if you need to find a specific photo and you can't, you're kind of at facing a problem there. And we're just gonna name it uh, track underscore wildland. And it'll do like a numbering system too, where it can be dash one, dash two, dash three, so on and so forth. And then you can adjust um, your uh, file sizes. So for me, I have it set to JPEG, color space is RGB, um, which is uh, red, green, blue. Uh, limit file size. You can limit your file sizes too, which might help you depending on if. Uh, if you're trying to enter like photo competitions and you're like, oh, my file cap is um, five megabytes. Uh, because what can happen with JPEGs if you export at max quality, your file sizes might get kind of high. <laughs> um, and uh, for image sizing, I try and do 300 PPI uh, just because I do prints. I do prints all the time. Um, background right here, uh, that is a print that I did, um, but I couldn't do that without making it 300 PPI or DPI. Um, I do PPI for my measurements, it's pixels per inch. Um, you'll also hear dots per inch, which is DPI. Um, they're pretty interchangeable. Uh, and then you can choose the watermark too. If you're doing commercial work or you're trying to send samples, you can uh, upload a watermark that you can put on your photo so that people aren't ripping it. So, you know, you can do watermarks on here too. Uh, and you can do post-processing where you can, um, after it's done exporting, you could open it up in uh, Photoshop if it's something like, oh, well, I wanted to, let's say, uh, completely reorganize the images or I want to stack the images to create a little compilation. Um, you can choose to do post-processing in Photoshop where you can do all that stuff. And that is it. We can choose to export right there and it'll show you a little bar of how that export is doing. And once it's done exporting, we're good to go. All right, I hope you guys feel comfortable with Lightroom now. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And again, have a good week, guys. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye.